Crop breeders have long recognized the existence of genotype by environment interactions, meaning that the difference in performance between two genotypes can depend on the environment. They often sought to understand the effect of soil and climate as the key dimensions of environment that might impact on the yield of different varieties. Exactly the same ideas apply when you look beyond varieties to other technical options farmers could use, for example, for soil fertility management, water conservation or pest management. It will also apply to social innovations. The dimensions of environment that matter will be very much broader and include the social and economic environment as well as the ecological one. And the response or performance measured could be many things other than crop yield. We've explored this idea in more detail in another video. Here I want to outline the principles that apply when designing experiments to investigate these interactions, for they are much the same, whatever is being investigated. I will try to explain the central idea by using a simple example. It is about crop varieties, and I have made it simple by considering just two varieties, labelled V1 and V2. I'm interested in how farmers' preference for, for these varieties depends on distance to market, and I've stated a hypothesis that I can represent as a graph. The design question, then, is one of choosing an experimental design that will give me points on the graph that will show where the lines really go. Is there a difference between varieties and how does it depend on distance to market? If I want to know where a straight line goes, I only need two points. So perhaps I can just have two locations in my study, one close to market and one far from it. and do a simple trial at each site. That means an experiment at each site that will compare the two varieties and measure preferences for them. Some replication of sites at each distance is probably a good idea. If I choose a site close to market and another far away, then they will probably differ in many characteristics in addition to distance from market. Having several sites at each distance will help confirm that it is distance or not some other factor that leads to differences in preference. I might also want to add some intermediate sites so that I can check that my straight line response with distance is realistic. It probably isn't. So I might end up choosing to use six sites as shown. The fact that I am measuring farmer preferences means that this needs to be an experiment done with close farmer involvement by farmers in farmers' fields at each site. Notice what could easily happen if you plan to use six sites but don't pay attention to where they need to be. If you'd not thought of, or not hypothesized, that distance to market is the critical characteristic of sites that explains variety differences, you might have ended up with six sites distributed something like this, with most of them at one end of the scale. This gives a poor estimate of where the line goes, and your results depend on the observations at the single site that happen to be a large distance from market. That is uncomfortable. And of course, an unplanned distribution of sites could be even worse than that. Planning where the sites should be, based on a hypothesis, does not end up with an experiment that is more expensive, but it does lead to one that is more effective and efficient. Now let's add a second hypothesis. It states that men and women's preferences for V2 are not the same, and that women's preference is less affected by distance to market perhaps because of women's focus on production for home consumption. Investigating that hypothesis requires that we have preferences of both men and women at each site to give data something like this. Gender of the farmer is an example of a context factor that is not determined by site. You can't usually point to a place on a map and say what the gender of farmers there will be, unlike distance to market. You need to be on the ground and design a study that includes both men and women at each location. 
Of course, there are still many details to think through, such as how many men and women need, are needed at each site. Can men and women state preferences based on the same plots of the crop, or do they need to grow their own plots, and so on. The process I outlined in the simple example can be used more generally. It goes through the steps of first defining the whole study region. You need to know where you want results to apply to before you can start selecting sites. Secondly, listing the options to be compared. They will become treatments in an experiment and listing the context in which they will be compared. Third, developing hypotheses of option by context interactions that you want to investigate and understand. The hypotheses will be based on scientific and local knowledge. Fourth, you'll probably have too many hypotheses that can be studied, so you'll need to prioritize them and select the most important. And then fifthly, you can start to design the studies, probably multi-environment trials, to test those hypotheses. Design should be built on all you know about experimental design and, if appropriate, doing experiments with farmers. It's not just a process of generating points for graph, we've discussed in previous videos. But if you don't get that part of it right, you will not meet your objectives of understanding the important interactions. If you think through the characteristics of concepts that interact with options, they fall into four groups. First, there are those that are important for how the options function but don't vary within the project domain. Hence we have no direct way of studying how they interact with options. Then there are those that vary systematically by location. I call them mappable because you can point to a place on a map and predict what value they will have there. Distance to market, used in the example, is one of these. They are factors we can use to choose locations when designing a multi-environment trial. Thirdly, there are those which are predictable in the sense you can find out their value before the study starts and it's unlikely to change during the study, but you can't fix them by choosing a location. Gender of farmer, in the previous example, was such a factor. And lastly, there are those factors which are unpredictable. You don't know what they will be until the experiment has finished. The weather during the season is one such variable, as is the level of pest pressure experienced. The quality of management of experimental plots is another. For such factors, you have to have enough repeats of the experiment to experience a range of levels if you want to stand, understand how they interact with treatments. That does not complete the design of a multi-environment trial. There are many other aspects to consider. We've put together a checklist to help you think through them.